because Ben Wallace has just resigned, uh, the Defence Secretary, and he has sent a letter to the Prime Minister. Uh, we can bring that letter to you. Uh, it says, Dear Prime Minister, Last month marked my fourth year as Secretary of State for Defence. It also marks the ninth year as a minister. I've had the privilege of serving you and your predecessors in the task of protecting this great country and keeping its citizens safe. As you know, that responsibility carries with it a 24-7 duty to be available at almost no notice. In my time as both Security Minister and at Defence, I've been able to contribute to the government's response to a range of threats yes, and yes, incidents from WannaCry, the 2017 terrorist attacks, the Salisbury poisonings, Afghanistan, Sudan and Ukraine. It has been an honour to serve alongside the men and women of our armed forces and intelligence services who sacrifice so much for our security. The last four years have seen our armed forces and their leadership shine through whether it was the evacuation of Kabul, our COVID response to Ukraine or Sudan, the professionalism of our people has been first class. The investment you made in defence as Chancellor, <clears throat> excuse me, and the continued support you've shown as Prime Minister has been key to enabling the Ministry of Defence to deliver for Britain. Uh, and Ben Wallace's resignation letter goes on. I am personally very grateful for your leadership. As I finish my tenure, I can reflect that the Ministry of Defence that I leave is now more modern, better funded and more confident than the organisation that I took over in 2019. As well as being active around the world, we've also invested in prosperity at home. I'm proud that I've secured GCAP, AUKUS, NCF, national shipbuilding and the defence and security industrial strategies that will secure thousands of British jobs for our young people many years into the future. Well, that's a flavour uh, of Ben Wallace's letter to the Prime Minister. Mari Aurora is here for me. Mari, interesting uh, reading about funding there that Ben Wallace highlights. That's something that he has fought really hard for during his time as Defence Secretary, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think that will be, to an extent, his legacy is he really did fight tooth and nail for defence funding. And obviously, he has said in the past, it's because, it's of course, it's obviously very close to his art. He is a former shot soldier himself. Therefore, he takes it very, very seriously and he does have a kind of personal or emotional stake when it comes to defence. So we know the front runner is expected to be Grant Shapps. Uh, we'll see whether that is confirmed or not. Grant Shapps has had a series of cabinet cabinet roles in past years, business, he's now energy, he was home sec for about five minutes, uh, also transport. So if he uh, is defence, that would be five cabinet roles in uh, a very short space of time. Now, there are num other names that have been floated, but Grant Shapps is seen as very much the front runner. And interestingly, let's not forget, summer last year in the leadership race, Grant Shapps did put himself forward. And then when he, fell, uh, when he fell out of the race, he then actually backed Rishi Sunak. So he is seen as quite a royal li uh, Rishi Sunak uh, supporter, essentially. And I think it's interesting you pick up on that point on funding, because perhaps with the fact the fact that government budgets are so stretched, maybe Rishi Sunak feels he needs someone who's going to uh, not necessarily make as much noise about calling for more and more and more funding. And in terms of, of timing, I mean, it's not a surprise that Ben Wallace is going mm. um, and, and probably also not a surprise that we're, we're going to get a replacement today yeah. um, be, because it, uh, Parliament's first day back a term starts on Monday, doesn't it? Well, exactly. And whoever's going to replace Ben Wallace really needs to be able to get you know, to grips with their brief. Parliament starts on Monday. Before we know it, it will be party conference season as well, and they'll be expected to make speeches about this new brief as well. So they do need to kind of get ahead of things as soon as possible. And as you say, it wasn't a surprise. Ben Wallace, we already knew he was standing down. This is not new news. We just weren't sure who the replacement was going to be. Uh, and interestingly, in that resignation letter that you read, Ben Wallace kind of outlining, outlining some of his achievements, some of the things he's very proud of, uh, as well as uh, all the other things that he uh, feels he's worked on or contributed to uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, a long, uh, a long time as Defence Secretary, but it looks like it's a new era. It's going, they're going to be really big shoes to, to, to mm. fill, aren't they? Because he has fought on funding, but yeah. also as somebody with a military background, he's someone who is very much felt to have the respect of, of, of the grassroots in the defence industry and, and out there in the fields. Exactly. And I think there's always a certain things that you remember about Ben Wallace. And I think a memory of mine of Ben Wallace is when we were seeing the Taliban taking back control of Afghanistan and Kabul, there was a moment where uh, Ben Wallace gave an interview and he got very, very emotional and was moved to tears about... Uh, 
the fact that some people were not going to get out and that really did show it was a testament to his emotional and personal connection to the armed forces that is something that Grant Chaps doesn't have doesn't mean he doesn't have other things to offer instead but it's not the same background if Grant Chaps is to replace Ben Wallace so huge shoes to fill and whoever will be uh, filling them will definitely have a huge job on their hands especially because we have a war currently going on in Europe and so many questions about international diplomacy and delicate situations with nations like